Alright guys, so today I want to talk to you a little bit about the power of epigenetics. And I apologize because my floor is super squeaky as you may be able to hear. I don't know, it's annoying me. Okay, so we all know a little bit about genetics, right? It's, it's what we're made of. It's the genetic code that we were given, you know, when the egg and the, and the sperm met together and those are our genetic code that we received from our parents. But there's this very, very important new field of research called epigenetics. And epi comes from the Greek meaning um, on top of or over or outside. And what it means is basically the genetic changes can be modified based on environmental, lifestyle factors and other things like this. So while part of your genetic code is fixed and can't be changed, another part of it can be changed. And that part can sometimes make all the difference between life and death, between wellness and, and illness, between amazing quality of life and feeling like crap all the time, okay? I want you to imagine a manuscript. Part of it is written in ink and part of it is written in pencil. Now, the, the part written in ink, you can't change it. That's your genetics, okay? But then there's a part written in pencil and this is your epigenetics and this is what you can change. Oftentimes these changes are insanely powerful. You literally can control your epigenetics through lifestyle, nutrition, uh, exercise, sleep quality, things like this. So if we're talking about this manuscript analogy, is the part written in pencil. The crazy thing about this is that these changes can become permanent. So it's like, you know, the first they're written in pencil, they may be temporary, but they can be passed on. They can become permanent for your own life or they can be passed on um, and be written in pen for your children's genetic code, if that makes sense. And how you influence those epigenetics is through everything that you do, feel, or experience. Okay, let me repeat that. Everything that you do, feel, or experience speaks directly to your cells and modifies your epigenetic code. Now that sounds a little extreme, maybe it is. I don't have like studies to support that for every single action and every single feeling and every single experience. That's, that's not feasible, but I wanna give a couple examples. So when I say everything you do feel or experience, uh, what you do is something that you, you have control over and that you're consciously making this decision. Everything you experience is things that um, sort of passively happen to you that you may be aware of and you may not be aware of. Everything you feel are chemical changes that you can initiate in your own body which then can have short and long-term health consequences for better or worse. So exercise is one of the biggest ones. This is something that you do, that you actively do. The food you choose to eat, how much time you allot for sleep, how much clean air, clean water, and clean food you're consuming, right? All of these things are things that you do. These things directly speak to your cells, both in the short term, and these things can even be passed on into the, the pen or the genetic code of your offspring, if you have kids. So that's everything that you do, everything you feel. Let's talk about that for a second. So I want you to think of the happiest time in your life, the happiest experience that you've ever had, okay? Um, this could be maybe maybe you had a surprise birthday party, maybe you got this amazing promotion, maybe it was the, the day you graduated high school or college, the birth of your first kid, whatever it was, the happiest day of your life. I want you to think about that just for a few minutes. Now, just by thinking about that, you can initiate and relive these feelings of happiness, right? All the feel-good neurotransmitters, they start, you know, they start firing and, and speaking to your cells, right? These are, these are powerful chemicals just by feeling a certain way, it can cause these epigenetic changes. Conversely, don't think about this one too long, but just remember for one second the time you were most scared or most angry in your entire life. Maybe it was if you were going through a divorce, maybe it was uh, you got in this crazy car accident, maybe it was when, you know, if you're a significant other cheated on you, I don't know, hopefully none of those things, but just the time you were the angriest or saddest or stressed. And if you start to think about that, for a few minutes, all those same feelings may start to arise again. You may start to get angry again. You may start to get sad again. So literally, you can cause a spike of cortisol, a spike of adrenaline, these powerful hormones, just 
by your thoughts, okay? So that is how what you feel speaks to your cells. This happening once in a while isn't that big of a deal, but if you're constantly reliving certain negative experiences like that and chronically in the state of elevated cortisol, elevated adrenaline, these things can really start to have impacts on our health and wellness. So that's everything you feel. Now, everything you experience, these are things, like I said before, that sort of passively happen to you. This may be, maybe you live in, like Hong Kong has terrible air quality, so every day these people are having this experience, it's sort of passive, they can't really control the air quality, but they're having the experience of, of breathing in all these toxins from the cars, from the uh, manufacturing plants, and this is sort of an experience that's happening to them. I hope none of these things have happened, but if you were maybe hurt really bad in a romantic relationship, or abused as a child, or, or ha were in an abusive relationship, right? This is an experience that was happening to you, and it spoke to your cells. It spoke to your mind and it spoke to your body and it told you to act a certain way in the future. Let's say somebody broke into your house, okay? This is an experience you had and now you, you feel like you just can't be safe, that you're not safe in your own home. And now you have this chronic elevated stress to where every single little creak or sound or the wind blowing or a branch brushing up against the window, now every time it's just you know, you get freaked out, you get stressed out, your cortisol levels rise. So that can be one way that experiences speak to your cells. You literally have the power to rewrite certain elements of your genetics. But this happens through things we do feel and experience. It's not direct, it's indirect, but it still has these powerful real world influences. So that's it. I hope this has provided some sort of insight for you or helped you think about things in a little bit of a different way. I know I don't want to get too abstract or too new agey or out there, but these things are important and I want you to begin to consider these things a little bit. Let me know in the comments below. I want you to talk to me about one thing that you feel and experience that have a positive impact on you and positively change your epigenetic code. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, problems or ideas, please uh, message me, Facebook me, email me, whatever. I'd love to chat more. Thank you all for watching. Hugely appreciated. I hope you found something useful and I'll see you next time. I have not washed my hair in like three days.